Are you living at the coast? If yes, you are part of the roughly 10% of the global population living below 10 meter mean sea level. In these areas, you will be experiencing one of the most certain threats of climate change, which is sea level rise. Until 2100, so until the end of the century, we're expecting a rise of global sea levels by about 26 to 98 centimeters. These numbers are associated with a lot of uncertainty and also with huge regional differences. So in your coastal area, sea levels may actually be rising even quicker. They cause coastal flooding, may affect livelihood and damage assets in the coastal zone. The dikes have to be built up higher and higher with rising sea levels. But they would also cause problems with water drainage, especially if we think about combined events of storm surge uh, on, the, on, on, on the one side and heavy rainfall events from the land side. So just building the dikes higher and higher may not be the ultimate solution for the long term, uh, in, in the long term. Especially this is true for less developed countries, which may not be able to afford to build dikes higher and higher. A similar uh, situation we find if we look at a coastal erosion. Traditional engineering solutions are in place. For example, here we see um, that the, that the sediment is transported away from the beach, which means that sand has to be replaced year by year, which we call sand uh, beach nourishment. This is a very cost intensive uh, uh, measure, which is also ecologically questionable. We need to find alternative solutions. One of these alternative solutions could be what we call ecosystem-based management. Ecosystem-based management is supposed to be cost-effective and self-adapting. I will show you uh, what that means. Currently, the most prominent ecosystem-based management measures that are implemented are the removal, the breaching, or the realignment of present coastal defense structures, such as dikes. This is done in order to create coastal wetlands in the newly flooded areas, these wetlands are able to keep up with sea level rise and they are attenuating hydrodynamic energy. That means that the surge heights that are reached at the coast may get lower and also the wave heights at the coast may get significantly lower. And as I said, they're self-adapting, which means that with high rates of sea level rise, these systems may automatically uh, uh, increase in elevation. The first example is a dike breaching project uh, which was done, uh, which is a pilot project in Liepenbroek in the freshwater part of the Scheldt estuary which is located in Belgium. There tidal marshes have been restored by partially breaching the dike and flood the embanked area behind with a controlled reduced tidal regime. There, there is a nice example um, that has been implemented at the coast of Holland, close to, uh, to Rotterdam. The so-called sand engine is a concentrated beach nourishment project where sand has been pumped from offshore sources onto the beach. The site consists of about 21.5 million cubic meter of sand that has been added to the south coast of Holland. In this figure, you can see how the, how the site looked uh, initially in the year 2011. So it was kind of a, kind of a huge, uh, huge sand bank um, with a specific form. As, as the site is here now, it uses the natural alongshore sediment transport, which is there anyways, due to the wave action, which is very large in this region. And, uh, and, and redistributes or distributes the sand along the whole coast. Presumably, this project replaces 
nourishment, like the yearly nourishment for about 20 years. So that is, uh, uh, that, that seems to be a very effective uh, measure uh, at the moment. The self-adapting part about this is that before this project has been implemented, the beach has been eroding during storm events. Nowadays, during storm events and large wave energies, the sediment, the, the sand from the engine is redistributed along the whole coast, maintaining the shoreline at its current situation and also supplying the dunes in the back of the beaches um, to protect keep people behind the dunes against coastal flooding. Observations have shown that in the, at the site itself, uh, the ecosystem has been developing rather quickly. So we're seeing a richer flora and fauna in this area than in the neighboring area. Also, the, the, the site has been shown to become a habitat for birds and seals. So the, uh, the actual goal of ecosystem-based management is to let nature do the work. Engineering is needed initially to implement the measures at the right time and at the right location. And once in place, the system, the, these adaptation strategies may reduce adaptation costs since we're actually harnessing systematically natural, dry, natural ecosystem uh, services. And because they're self-adapting, so they don't have to be repeated year after year. Another nice effect of the ecosystem-based management, of course, is that habitats are restored and supplying um, more ecosystem services that are ecologically important. There, there are also problems related to ecosystem-based management. These problems include the large sensitivity of some of the measures to the knowledge of the natural system. So the measures have to be very well defined and they have to be carefully implemented. And another big problem currently is that the social acceptance has to be developed. It's not there by itself because in many cases it means that people are basically uh, retreating rather than um, uh, uh, gaining more land from the sea. So this is a very long-term and uh, a long-term process that has to be taken um, very seriously.